Hi and there! Look what I have here in my bench. I'm so glad I have this thing. Uh, unfortunately, it's not mine. Uh, it's here for repair, but I mean, this is such a nice example of beautiful engineering, beautiful aesthetics. This is a Revox a B750 integrated stereo amplifier. It is from 1978 and uh, you know, back in the days, um, it actually costed a whopping 1,198 US dollars back in 78. This thing was super expensive, premium kind of piece of hi-fi equipment. And also inside, I think it's one of the greatest example of great engineering and serviceability in mind for a consumer product. So this thing is actually looking so great also because uh, when I received this thing uh, it was in pretty sorry state. It was all dirty, there was uh, dust uh, everywhere, some scratches on the top and um, it was sitting for many many years somewhere. So yeah when I got it I had to do a complete restyling of this thing and uh, I had to disassemble it completely and I cleaned every single panel of this and also also uh, repainted the top it was not worth uh, savaging it was all scratched and uh, the paint was flaking off so I completely repainted it and now it's looking gorgeous and uh, so I handed back this thing, uh, you know, because uh, the owner didn't want an electrical uh, kind of restoration, just aesthetics. So handed back this thing. After a week, I received this thing back because the output of the phones didn't work. So, yeah. Look at this thing, it's just beautiful. All right, so let's get the, the cover off. Huge transformer here on the back. Power supply section here. Here is the preamplifier board, the switch board, and the, the amplifier is right there. Two uh, heat sinks, obviously, because this thing is uh, can actually output up to 85 watts to uh, 8 ohms which is quite quite high power so so nicely built and everything is uh, let me show you that everything is completely detachable how nice is that <laughs> how nice is that I mean I'm stunned uh, look at the beautiful engineering that went into designing this thing is Everything is symmetrical, it's very nicely laid out and I mean everything has its own little connector and you can actually detach. I mean this is the front panel. If you want to access the main uh, board here, that there is a uh, motherboard here with all the those little cute boards here. Those are all the EQs very few screws i mean there are two here on the top other two on the bottoms so this thing this whole thing just slides out and uh, you know you don't have to desolder anything because everything is on connectors there's a connector right there and this is just so great and obviously it's from germany so i'm gonna find some uh, freco capacitors west germany obviously 78 yeah and uh, yeah, I don't know, I'm from 78, oh, still good, I, I don't know. Uh, and also a refab bomb, <laughs> right there, ready to explode. Uh, you know, this doesn't really receive, the, uh, usually those net explodes are across mains, this one is just a decoupling cap, so yeah. Uh, there's no real problem by leaving this thing in, but mm, uh, I don't know. I would change it anyways. I, I would actually change all the capacitors on this thing, but 
Uh, unfortunately, it's not mine, so yeah. I already changed the, the refill capacitor across the mains. All right, so we are ready to do some troubleshooting and testing of this thing. Yeah, let's uh, turn this thing on. And I, I heard the relay clicking, so he said that the phones, no matter what, they don't, they didn't work, uh, or they worked uh, intermittently, uh, only one channel or only the other channel, and um, eventually the uh, the signal actually went out. So let's uh, try and confirm that. I mean. Only one channel is working, that's uh, okay. I'm gonna get... Oh! It's not working anymore. So obviously being uh, everything on connectors, that the downside is that over time, uh, moisture, corrosion and everything can actually turn those connectors into bad contacts. So, get a poker or something and uh, just uh, poke, whatever. No, it's not turning back. So now it's back. Only the other channel, that's very interesting. <laughs> Before it was the left channel, now it's the right channel. So, I don't know. The preamplifier, I don't know. It went away. What is that? Oh, <laughs> I found the problem. I'll let you hear that. It should be playing something, but it's completely dead. Okay, get the thing, attach this relay. Boom. <laughs> and it goes. Just, I can actually, <laughs> oh my god, is that just that simple? Uh, yes it is, and I, let's uh, hear if it is stereo, yes, yes, I think it's just that. Uh, let's see the other, yes. Being made everything with connectors and beautifully engineered. This thing is super easy to repair too, so I don't have to disassemble anything apart of this board. How cool is that? There are just four screws. Everything's color coded, nice. If it was for me, I would actually change all the tantalium capacitors here, all those, um, I don't know if you can see those, but all those uh, green uh, blobs, uh, those are all tantalium capacitors, and those are very prone to spectacular failure, especially after so many years. Okay, so I changed the lens. This is the relay that is uh, acting bad. And by looking at it, I don't know if you can see it well, but uh, there's a bad contact right there. And also on the other solder joint, it's a bad contact. Wow. And I, I bet this is the only problem this thing has. Okay, so let's do it on the fly. So to re-solder, you have to desolder first, obviously. So... There we go. If you're doing this, just get yourself one of those. It's so great. And just uh, so easy to use. Just desolder stuff so easily. And now I could actually take this 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 uh, whole relay out. Look at that! It's so easy, uh, but uh, not going to. 
and I'm going to resolder this thing right now. Just don't set the uh, the temperatures too high so you don't uh, lift the pads and just resolder the thing. Just a little bit here. There we go. Okay. This is not a double-sided board, so you don't need to uh, put too much solder. Done. To complete the, the job, you need to uh, just clean this thing a little bit. So you get a little bit of uh, pure isopropanol, a little Q-tip here. Takes just a second to do, but the result will be so good. And you won't have the, uh, the flux going everywhere and ruining your board really so there we go takes just a moment but uh, the result will be so much better all right so I expected the board and now it's properly soldered and I just couldn't leave this uh, refac capacitor bomb in here so what's up I'm gonna actually replace it with a proper new capacitor right there, which is nice. And as a side note, um, when you are replacing, let's say, a capacitor like a capacitor like this, just be nice and uh, you know, just a good practice to solder things with the readings uh, clearly visible. All right, so let's try this out, shall we? And it's perfect on both. Yeah. All right, so let's see the output power of this thing, shall we? So have a, a uh, dummy load connected and uh, have a signal generator here set to one kilohertz. Here it is. So the maximum power output is 20.5.6 something. Volts RMS. Oh, of course, I can actually go higher, but there is a lot of distortion happening. So, this is the maximum power RMS power, obviously, I can actually get. So, 20.6 squared divided by the resistance, which is 8 ohms. So, it's about 53 watts. Not bad. 53 watts RMS. It's very different from peak powers. All right, so the Revox B750. Oh, I'm just in love with it. All the knobs perfectly matched and everything is oh, so well designed. Just a great piece of equipment, and uh, but uh, I, you know, I fixed the headphones uh, issue and uh, I tested it. It's perfectly working, so it's now time to say goodbye to it. And uh, yeah, that's basically it for today. Uh, hopefully, you enjoyed this uh, very quick tour and uh, repair of this uh, quick repair of this Revox. Uh, amplifier and uh, yeah as always thanks for watching and I'll see you next time bye